Hi, I'm Peter McNamara. Um, the name of the company is PMAC and we've been around, uh, we're 18 years in existence and before that I worked for International Contract Cleaners which was a stone cleaning and restoration company since I was 18. So uh, that's my experience. We specialise in floors and stone cleaning. Um, so I'm just going to go through a brief, I'm going to be 10 minutes on, on what can be done to restore floors. Um, this is one of our jobs in, in uh, City Hall. Uh, we've done that um, what, 10, 10, 11, 12 years ago um, and we're back there regularly just to maintain it. So what we would encourage um, is that we get the existing maintenance staff on site to be able to maintain their floor and we would visit every couple of years just to, to top it up to make sure everything's okay. So that's where we would try leave floors. Um, that's where we try to leave the floors. So when we go on site, we've tried to find a history of the floor, uh, what contamination, what it's been used for, um, has it been repaired or restored in the past, um, and then the final use of the floor. So there's no point in trying to restore a floor if it's not suitable for the environment. So it, you have to consider what environment is going to be used for. It's going to be used for restaurant, kitchen, what tr foot traffic is going to be on, what entrance mats are going to be there. So all that we would try to get at the first meeting, what, you know, and then we would look at the resource for the maintaining of that floor. So there's no point in restoring a floor, putting in a nice environment and then having no maintenance. So you have to have a maintenance plan in there, whether your existing staff can do it or whether you need a specialist to maintain it. I would say what I would try and encourage is that the existing maintenance staff carry out the maintenance on the floor. It works out, more, works out cheaper um, and also they take better care of the floor. They don't leave it to specialists. It comes in every three months and don't worry about it between that time. Now I'm going to go through some floors that we have restored. Uh, it's a Portland Stone um, staircase. So um, this is in Thomas Street. Um, so th on the left you can see how bad it was and the right is, it, it's totally restored. So in that job we went in, we cleaned off the contamination to see what was actually under it. It was glues, there was small repairs. Um, <coughs> You can see there was, uh, sorry, you can see there's concrete um, repairs on it. Um, so we clean it off, expose the, the colour of the floor, see what it actually is under it, see can it be restored. Okay, and then you have three options. You can grind, you can hone, you can polish, okay? Uh, people talk about grinding the floor, you're going to remove a lot of stock. You're actually not going to remove an awful amount of floor when you grind the floor, okay? So you're going to remove a lot of contamination on the floor and maybe a small amount, maybe a mill at most on the floor. And after that, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're taking off an awful lot of stock. To hone a floor, basically what you're doing is you're closing the pores from the grind, or you're just closing the pores on the floor so it's easy to maintain. And when you talk about polish the floor, you're adding shine to the floor. So some floors can be polished, some floors can't. Um, and then we talk about sealing a floor, where there's an impregnator or a coating. An impregnator sinks into the pores of the, of the stone, keeps stains out for a certain amount of time and the coating goes on top of the floor, changes the appearance on the floor, and we'll come back to that later. So on the stone floor, you can see what can be done. Uh, and well, on stone steps, they all have to be done by hand. Um, can, we've large machines. We've, one of the jobs we did was Dunleary Shopping Centre, 4,000 square metres of marble restored. Large machines for that, but just as much work goes into the smaller, smaller jobs. Um, tile floor, this is a recent one on, um, on uh, Merrion Square. So on the left, you can see where the tiles have been removed at the doorway. Um, so we had to replace these tiles. So what we did was, that's going to be a busy, busy entrance door here. Uh, so this one here is a busy entrance door. So what we did was we took tiles up from a corner of the floor and replaced them at the entrance door where it's going to get heavy traffic and it's going to be very visible. We couldn't locate tiles that were um, similar enough. So what we did is we made our own tiles and replaced them in a less inconspicuous place. So the floor was, it's as good as, it's, it's totally restored, looks very well. That's the office of, of Scott Talon Walker. Um, and they were considering not, not restoring the floor. So it's back to, back to as it was. So tile floors can be restored. Um, this is a terrazzo floor down in Port Leach Hospital. We were down there, we were doing some work on, on a small bit of work on brickwork and um, we got talking to the guys on site and there was carpet ordered for, the, uh, for this terrazzo floor. We spotted terrazzo, we did a sample and that's the way it ends up. So terrazzo is absolutely super surface, 
comes back up brilliantly. You can, you can a small grind, a small hone, a polish, and you can finish off. It's a very resilient floor. And if you notice all, this, all the old schools, convents, all terrazzo floors, all can be restored. Resilient floors, okay, so this is a hospital, St. Vincent's Hospital. So rather than replacing the floors, what you can do, there's, there's now coatings developed that go over a resilient floor, that cover the, cover the uh, scratches, um, and then colour it, you can put a flake on it, so you can colour whatever you like, and then you put a topical seal on it, and the topical seal uh, will have a slip resistance um, and also make it very easy to clean. So there's, there's topical seals out there now which are giving on, on um, healthcare uh, environments are given 10 year guarantees. So that's you finished with your floor for 10 years. Um, easy to maintain, slip resistant, coefficient of friction above 0.4 or 40 in the wet. So it's very good. So resilient floors are, are, can be restored. Uh, concrete floors, um, this is Farmley in, at cow sheds in, in Farmley. Um, it's now an art gallery. We went in an old painted concrete floor. They were wondering what to do with it. Uh, we took off the paint, we had to grind off the paint, uh, rehoned, repolished, and because they were using it for um, events, uh, we put a topical seal on it. So wines, spillages, if they okay to go on a topical seal, um, and it can be cleaned up the next day. Uh, if it was an impregnating seal on it, uh, the spillages on it, if they were left overnight, may sink into the floor and maybe a bit harder to remove. And then we all talk about restore. So is it possible just to clean only? Um, to clean only, the, on the left is Rusper House. Um, you can see the, the quarry tiles. Quarry, another absolutely brilliant surface. Uh, people tend to ignore it or rip it up or say it's very ugly. It comes up really well. And on the right um, is uh, Christ Church Cathedral. Um, the floor was just maintained very poorly, um, coat after coat of seal, and then um, the maintenance product they've used and was dropping residues on the floor all the time. Um, so we had to remove the coating, uh, remove all the contamination, and that's what we left. There's no restoration work involved at all. So then seals impregnate or topical, okay? <coughs> impregnate or sit below the surface of the, of the stone or tile. Okay, to leave the stone exposed to spills. So you can still stain the stone floor if it's impregnated. Okay, in impregnators um, slow down the absorption rate of the stone. Basically, that's the way I would put it. So if you leave a, if you, if you leave a, 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 a uh, oil or a wine or whatever on the stone floor, it will soak in over a period of time. Um, impregnators do not change the, the texture or the appearance of the stone. So that's the beauty of impregnators. So your stone looks exactly, if it's applied correctly, looks exactly the way it should. The only way you will know an impregnator is if the stone the stone doesn't get wet, okay? So it just slows down the, the absorption rate. Replace after three years, depending on traffic and wear, and the stone retains the natural beauty, okay? But does require maintenance. Okay, coatings is permanent or strippable, okay? It's a permanent coating. You put down, they say it's gonna last five, 10 years, okay? On this is on a stone or on a, um, on a terrazzo or whatever, okay? Permanent coating is very hard to remove. The only way to remove permanent coating is to grind. So they will traffic down the centre of it and you have to grind off the whole floor. So permanent coatings, I, you know, I wouldn't put on, on, on floors. Stripable coatings, they last 18 months to two years, possibly three years, depending on the location. Very simple, go in, strip it off and reapply. Okay? Um, if the stone is very porous, you may need an impregnator beforehand. So the coatings have different shine levels. Okay? So you can have a matte satin or gloss. Um, the slip resistance, so you now put a coating over a floor, so now the, the slip resistance of the floor is that of the coating. So you just have to be careful of that. Um, coating's traffic, so you will have traffic lanes down the middle. Uh, they can cheapen the appearance of the stone or the tile, so now you're looking at a coating rather than the natural beauty of the, of the stone or the tile. So on a polished marble, coatings don't look, really, don't look well at all. And then on the maintenance program, you're maintaining the coating rather than maintaining the stone. So you just have to be careful of that. And then slip resistance, okay, so the higher the shine gives the impression of the higher the slip risk, which generally is, is, for, is, is true. Now, I notice porcelains now, very high, porcelain, uh, very high shine porcelains out there, which have a really, really good slip rating. Um, but, you know, normally if you have a, if you have a polished stone, polished concrete, um, if it does get wet, you will have a, you know, there will be slip issues. So you have to consider the environment where the floor is used. Um, and what it's used for. So in a bank, if it's going to be if the, or a, a lobby, uh, hotel, if you can control the wet, okay, on the floor, um, 
there'll be no slip issues because it's like your it's like your Formula One tire. You know, your slick tires are really, really good in the dry, but not so good in the wet. So if you can control the spills or the wet getting into the building, polished floors are excellent. Um, wet and dry conditions, you have to keep the you know, proper walk-off mats. Um, uh, the walk-off mats have to be maintained. And then if you look at the shopping centres where you would have, uh, if you go to, um, go to Liffey Valley or go to Tala Shopping Centre or Blanchardstown, you know, they have tiles and they have marble, okay, but they have maintenance staff there constantly. If there's a spill, it's mopped up straight away. Uh, level of scratching will increase slip resistance, okay, so on a stone what you would do to get a, to get a slip resistance of uh, above uh, 35, uh, coefficient of friction above 35, you would generally hone the floor to a level of about 120 grit to 200 grit. Okay, which you, you, you cannot see the, the scratches on the floor to, to the naked eye, but if you get down and have a look, you'll see smaller scratches on your floor, and that's what gives you slip resistance. And that's on any floor. So there'll be a, there'll be a light mat, there'll be a light sheen on it, but um, you, can see the, you can see the scratches on the floor. Um, maintenance will affect slip resistance. Um, we did a job in, in, in college in UCD. Um, and uh, there was a problem with a Jura limestone floor that went down um, and it wasn't passed. Uh, so we etched the floor um, the manufacturer, the German guys came over, just, they told us to etch the floor. We etched it, it didn't pass, we etched it a second time. Okay? So we spent a lot of, lot of work on the etch the floor a second time and putting an impregnating seal on it. Slip resistance was achieved and everybody was happy. Okay? We went back about eight months later and it was a polished floor where the maintenance staff out with their buffers and, and made it much easier to clean. So, you know, uh, a floor without to higher slip resistance is harder to maintain. Okay? And that's, uh, that's a general rule under our coating centre now with ceramic beads in them that are make it a bit easier. Um, but generally, to, it's more a slip resistant floor is harder to clean. Um, and, uh, uh, sorry, there are coatings out there now which can achieve um, uh, above 40 in the, in the wet. And that's me finished on floors, guys. So, you know, that was just a, a quick thing, what can be done on floors. Look, look, look at, don't look at replacing your floor first. Look at what can be done to the existing floor. Okay, thank you. Thank you.